Hello and welcome. Thanks for staying tuned to Health Matters on Channels Television. I'm Mary Alale Yusuf. People adopt a common attitude these days in these parts. I feel fine, so I must be okay. But some ailments come with a minimal number of or no symptoms at all. Some of these conditions could be better handled if detected in the early stages. Today we look at the kidneys, how important they are, how to keep them healthy, why we should pay attention to them. My guest on this subject is Dr. Babawali Bellu. He's a consultant nephrologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital and a lecturer at the College of Medicine, Unilag. Thanks for coming to the show. Now, let me start by asking you, what is the function of the kidneys? What do they do in our body? Okay, the kidneys um, have quite a number of functions. Um, the they are most com most popular for making urine. Okay, and in truth, what that involves is excreting the waste products from the body. So whatever we take in, yeah, and the body no longer requires mo is excreted in the urine as a waste. So the commonest or the most prominent function of the kidneys are to excrete waste from the body. However, there are a lot of other functions in addition to that. The kidneys are the centers that regulate our blood pressure. They make hormones that uh, control manufacture of blood by the marrow and turnover of bone. Uh, and so they have effects on quite a number of organs in the body. When you say turnover of bone, are you saying that we manufacture bone? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, we manufacture bone. The bone is not, it's not just a, a structure for keeping us upright. Okay, those styles serves as a store of certain substance, for example, calcium. Okay, so we mobilize calcium from bone when we are not getting enough from our foods, and then we, when we get enough again, we return the calcium. So bone is a dynamic uh, tissue. Okay, and that turnover of bone is regulated by, by the kidney. Okay, what could cause kidney disease? There are quite a number of conditions that can cause kidney disease, and the list is quite long. Um, uh, but it also varies, so the causes also vary from population to population. Having said that, uh, almost half of all cases of kidney disease are due to hypertension and diabetes. Anywhere in the world you look at the data, the, almost half of all people who have uh, kidney disease have it from either hypertension or diabetes. But there are quite, quite a number of other conditions, HIV infection, obstruction of the urinary tract, ab uh, congenital abnormalities, certain other systemic illnesses that affect the body somewhat but then also damage the kidney. For example, uh, lupus in which the body is fighting itself but also destroying the kidney. So the, number, the, the list is quite long. But what are the commonest? Okay, so in this environment, uh, you, if you want to list the commonest causes, you'd say hypertension, diabetes. There's something referred to as chronic glomerulonephritis in which the side effects of infection, so the, there's infection in the body, the body mounts a response to that infection, but part of that response damages the kidney, okay? okay. Uh, those are the three common things. Then you have HIV infection, okay, and uh, obstruction of the urinary tract. I think that would be the five commonest causes of kidney disease in this environment. Okay, now some people have expressed this concern. Of late, in the past few years, it looks as if kidney problems are on the increase. Is this really true or is it just a, a function of, you know, um, awareness of the public? Okay, so that's a big debate even in the... Uh, nephrology community, we, there's no doubt we are seeing more people with kidney disease in the hospitals today than a few years back. The question is, how much of that is kidney disease becoming more common in the population and how much is that that the people who have kidney disease are now coming to hospital because of enlightenment and education? And, and um, a lot of us tend to believe that kidney disease is more common now than before, not just uh, that more people are coming to the hospital. We think that kidney disease is more common. And we think so because if you remember I said the two commonest causes of kidney disease worldwide are hypertension and diabetes. Mm -hmm. That's increasing in prevalence in the general population. And so we expect that if the things causing kidney disease, the conditions that cause kidney disease are increasing in the population, then kidney disease is expected to be increasing in the population. But that's just half of the story. The other half of the story is that 
there's been some dramatic change in the way we view kidney disease now and say like 10 15 years ago what's this what, for example when i was a student it was only people who had kidney failure that we tagged as having kidney disease but we now understand kidney disease better we know that before people develop kidney failure there's about a 10 year period where they already have the kidney disease they're just not having symptoms okay so now we group all of them together as kidney disease when we talk of kidney disease most people think of the patients who are having dialysis but those are mm. people who have kidney failure they form about five to ten percent of all people who have kidney disease so they're just a small population you can imagine that there's a so larger population percent are walking around with without you. knowing okay? okay and that's a big challenge you said no symptoms so how does one know how does one get attention before it becomes dangerous okay now kidney disease Generally, at this point, it's good to differentiate between an acute form of kidney disease and a chronic form of kidney disease. Acute kidney injury usually is a part of some other illness. So the person is quite ill from something else. For example, a woman gives birth, starts to bleed after delivery, and then the kidneys fail because of the blood loss. Generally, for people who have acute kidney injury, that's what you see, some other illness. So it's a secondary so problem. So most times, it's a secondary problem, okay? And usually outcomes are determined by the primary underlying disease condition okay so if the woman bleeds once you're able to replace the blood okay maintain kidney support while the kidneys are not working generally kidney function tends to return okay so now the incidence and prevalence of, of acute kidney injury appears to have been stable over time okay and so outcome however chronic kidney disease on the other hand is usually a slowly progressive and irreversible loss of kidney function. Now, because it's, the onset is subtle and the, uh, the progression is slow over many years, okay, most of the patients can't even identify when the problem started. Okay? Now, the other problem or the other uh, consideration is that People don't usually develop symptoms of kidney disease until they've lost about 60% of kidney function. Okay? So usually by the time they have symptoms that can make you point to the fact that they have kidney disease, kidney damage is so far advanced that it's a problem already. Okay? And that's one of the biggest challenges with, with kidney disease. But is there a way? Because what we're looking for now is to keep the person healthy. Is there a way of catching this kidney disease before it gets to 60 percent damage now that's the saddest part of it there is a way however in this part of the world many of the patients who we see in the hospital only come when they, they've developed kidney failure and it's a reflection of our health seeking behavior we generally don't go to the hospital unless we are unwell we feel that as long as we're feeling well then we are okay there's no problem now Ideally, what we should do is to go to the hospital when we are well and have regular checkups. Many patients come to my clinic, and when I tell them they have kidney failure, they say, how come, doctor? I've never been ill in my life. In fact, I've not been well, to the hospital for the last 20 years. You mean you have to tell a patient? Yes, and so it's a big problem that we face. So the patient has no symptoms, feels as well. Kidney disease is ongoing underneath, and then when the person then develops kidney failure, starts to have symptoms, then comes to the hospital. But they're very simple tests. Okay, that are done as part of every routine medical yeah, check. That was my next question. You okay, know, that your doctor will do and be able to pick subtle early signs of kidney disease. It's, it's contained in the routine it's medical checkup. It's contained check in routine medical So check how often does one do a routine medical checkup? Okay, so how often should, should one, one do Okay, <laughs> and, and that, that varies with age. Okay. okay? So young people who are less than 40, 45, maybe once a year, okay? Once you are older than 45, then you should do more commonly. Oops, more okay. than once a year. Okay, now ideally, if you are between 45 and 60, you should not, for, there's no year that you must not have a medical, okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, some people advise twice a year. Definitely once you are 60 years and above, you should have at least twice a year or even more frequently, okay? And, and that's, that's the challenge, that our people only go to hospital. They think that going to hospital is for when you are ill, not when you are well. Okay, so um, how, how does uh, 
<laughs> I've forgotten what I wanted to ask you, actually. But um, let's go on to the next thing. How is it diagnosed? Okay. What are the things you do? So, now, you know I said that early in the course of kidney, chronic kidney disease, there are no symptoms. Okay? So the person feels ordinarily well. But if he goes to hospital and sees a doctor, mm -hmm. okay, there are two main things that the doctor would look for. The doctor would look for the presence of protein in the urine, okay, and a blood test that measures something called creatinine in the blood. Mm -hmm. Those two are the markers, the most important markers for kidney disease. They are simple tests that are available in almost every laboratory that, that you have in the country. So there are things that can be done easily. Okay. Would you say we are properly equipped in Nigeria to handle our kidney disease burden? Mm, that's, that's a fairly difficult question to answer, even though it appears simple. Okay, let's take it in bits. Okay, so... We are equipped to diagnose. Okay, so diagnosis of kidney problem. disease is relatively easy to make in this environment, okay? It's, we are able to do that, okay? We are also able to provide treatment, mm -hmm. okay? But I said the question is difficult to answer because even though we are able to provide treatment, okay, and care, the patient population, okay, and the facilities are discordant, okay? okay. So there are so many patients and not so few doctors. facilities, okay? Not enough so facilities, but how about doctors? Facilities include manpower okay. and then equipment, okay? okay? So in terms of manpower and equipment, we're short-staffed, okay? So we don't have enough doctors, uh, nurses who are dedicated to care for kidney disease, and we don't have enough facilities for the number of people who have kidney disease in Nigeria. Okay. 